show let's go over this blockbuster crazy crazy article courtesy of the rolling stone let's go over that right because this is ridiculous it seems like crystal Lea can't catch a fucking break just when he thinks it's about to end it hits him over the head another fucking time now 10 additional women claim the comedian preyed on them 10 more added to however many more were featured in that, in that documentary however many more came out initially however many more contacted alice hamilton however many more are all over the place some of them dm'd me but you know i'm not in a position to kind of platform and tell anybody story in that regard um and it's just not my place and it's not really something i want to do in that really shape or form but there's many victims out there many many and somehow this guy just keeps his head out of water i'm not really too sure how possible that is maybe it's the whiteness of his skin who knows maybe there's other factors at play but i'm actually curious at this point why hasn't this guy been arrested I'm not calling for him to be arrested in that regard. You know, he has to deal with his, his situation how it is. But how the fuck has he not been arrested yet? Please somebody tell me this. Like, what's going on? Anyway, let's continue. This is courtesy of Rolling Stone. Do everything I say. Ten women claim Crystal Leah preyed on them. Um, it says here, Jasmine Wolf was visibly uncomfortable. Sitting in the driver's seat of her car in an open parking lot, the 28-year-old looked around and drew a quick breath. Glancing at her phone, perching her dashboard recording her, awaiting a reply on the other end of the device was comedian De Crystal Lear, who Wolf says had instructed her to send over an explicit video of herself in public view. Huh? Crystal Lear is asking girls to send pictures of themselves fingering themselves in the car park or something, in the parking lot. Yo. Wolf only had seconds to comply. If she didn't send over the footage fast enough, she knew he'd become furious. She had already told Delia that she wasn't comfortable being in a plain sight of passers-by. Delia says he, he didn't care. Minutes later, a nervous-looking wolf stares into the camera while wringing her hands. She says, It doesn't matter if I'm feeling sad or if I'm feeling priority. It should have been about you. No, it should, it should have been about you and I'm sorry. She says in November 2021 video, reviewed by the Rolling Stone. This woman is apologizing to Chris Lear for not sending him. Yo, yo. Okay, let's continue. Wolf claims the apology was scripted by Delia, who was angry that she dared to push back against his request. Okay, the only way this makes sense is if they've already had this relationship before. If they already have a relationship where they send each other nudes and shit, fair enough. But still, this is fucking insane. This is some cult shit. <laughs> Like, this is like that guy on YouTube. Who was that guy on YouTube that had a cult? I don't think he's still around. I think it's like his name is like Onion or Ossian or something. Remember that dude on YouTube who had like these young girls living with him in the house and shit? Very, very suspect. I'm not sure if he's still around. Ossian, Ossian. If you guys know your YouTube lore, do you guys know what I'm talking about? Oh, I forgot his fucking name. There's so many creeps on YouTube anyway. Um, Actual, like, you know creepy creepos um onision that's it fucking big up Rob, robert Min minnis um onision that's the guy yeah that sounds like an onision level type of shit anyway let's continue with the article two had met march the two had met in march 2020 with wolf responding to one of chris Lee's instagram stories during the early days of the pandemic again with the instagram dm shit boy fucking hell man the amount of people that have been preyed upon in that app personally via stand-up comedians must be in the fucking millions by now if you're a wife or a girlfriend of a stand-up comedian the last thing you want to see is your partner's dms they must be crazy if eric griffin's out here saying that he was saying doing some mad shit before he was married and eric griffin looks away like eric griffin looks like right and he looks like he's got zero game imagine him just complaining at girls all the time trying to holler at them but imagine, Eric Griffin said there was a period of his time where he was a bit thirsty and going crazy on the DMs. Imagine what other people are doing on the DMs. These stand-up comedians must be absolutely running rancid, rapid, whatever that word is on fucking DMs. So if you're a partner or a wife of a stand-up comedian, make sure you don't check their DMs because it's going to break your heart. <laughs> the stuff you might see, you might find out your, your husband is a fucking animal. Um, it continues. She was familiar with Aaliyah through the sitcom Whitney. 
and recently finished the second season of You, which he guest starred in. Um, cooped up at home in Canada, recently separated from her husband, who she was still living with at the sake of their young daughter. Okay, this woman's a little bit sussy as well. You're going through a breakup, you're living at home with your husband because you want to look after your kid, but then you're also DMing random comedians to fucking shit or to flirt with. Like, you need to get your priorities in order as well. Put down your phone, look after your kid, go get a job or whatever. Like, what the fuck is she doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> this woman sounds like a fucking whore. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. Um, who was um, still living in the second of her daughter. Wolf described as needing a, dis a distraction. Oh, yeah, that's it. My mental. Is this going to be another mental health shit? Somehow, Chris Alia was meant to be a mental health fucking savior. Needed a distraction. Um, being a mother is the hardest job in the world. Yeah, all right, cool. Um, one off message to an attractive comedian seemed harmless. Fuck off. Fuck off. If we're allowed to call Crystal Lee a creep and a potential pedo, we can also call this woman a fucking whore. You're not divorced from your husband yet. Get divorced, be actually single, don't live in the same house, and then try and holler some stand up comedians. But actually, maybe get your life in order, get a fucking job. If you don't have one, maybe get a house, maybe move out, maybe actually move on and then go from there. Come on, man. What's she doing? Let's move on. This is funny though, this bit, right? She needed a distraction and a one-off message to her, an attractive comedian seemed harmless. Within minutes, Dalia responded. <laughs> Within minutes. <laughs> Wolf says the conversation moved to Snapchat. So quickly, he fucking moved her down the funnel like a good salesman, right? He got her in the funnel, moved her down it quickly, sealed the deal. You know what I mean? Let's get creepy quickly. Like he wants to get from zero to creep fast um to snapchat by the end of the day delia had requested nude photo oh my god you see what i'm saying about a whore within minutes delia responded wolf says the conversation moved to snapchat by the end of the day delia requested nude photographs wolf obliged a one-off message to an attractive comedian seemed harmless by the end of the day she's got a fucking ass out she's spreading her cheeks and showing a fucking bussy to fucking chris delia Imagine your mum is upstairs in her room taking fucking selfies of her fucking vajayjay and sending them to fucking Crystalia while your dad is downstairs making waffles for you. Or try, you know, or like your dad's downstairs thinking about ways to get his wife back. Little does he know she's in her room fingering herself and sending videos to fucking Crystalia. <sighs> Everybody's sick. Anyway, we continue. It almost felt like kismet. Um, Wolf um, says of their budding relationship, particularly because Delia had allegedly explained he was similarly a constrained situation with his partner, Christian Taylor. <gasps> oh no. Chris Delia gave her the old, I'm going through some stuff too. It's complicated at home. He gave her that thing and she bought it hook, line and sinker. This woman sounds like a complete dullard. I'm not going to lie. She sounds like a little bit of a, you know, there's a little bit of a pee rattling in between her brain there. That she got, she she already got, she already was obliging enough to send nude photographs to a comedian she doesn't know in one day. And then believed him when he said he went to leave his wife. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Wolf came to Leah said that he only he was only living with her for the sake of their newborn. They spoke constantly every day, sending Snapchat videos back to forth. I really needed something positive in my life, and it seemed like this was it. <laughs> I had somebody who seemingly could relate to as much, so I thought I was going through in my life. Yo, one thing I want to note here is that this also was around the same time. It sounds like when Leah was saying that he was in recovery. He was getting the help that he needed. So all that time that he was trying to pretend like he wasn't out there cheating anymore, doing this crazy creep shit, he was doing it at the same exact time. So that video of him crying, being upset and shit makes so much sense. But also think back at it. Do you guys remember the previous episodes of the Golden Hour? I felt like Chris was in a really pissy mood. He was making some weird comments and shit, right? Just weird. So I legitimately think that he was aware of this article coming out. And he probably got given a heads up by the journalist. Hey, do you want to comment on this? 
So that's why he was, he's was he been a bit in a dour mood on the Golden Hour podcast. I think so. This explains a lot, personally for me. We continue here. It wouldn't be until June 2020 that Wolf learned the seemingly spontaneous way she came to know Dalia mirrored the claims of many other women. That month, a woman named Simone Rossi kicked off an outpouring of allegations against Dalia on Twitter, pointing out the irony of Dalia playing a comedian who preys on underage girls in Netflix U when she claimed he had messaged her for photos when she was 16. Soon after, dozens of women began sharing stories anonymously of their alleged encounters with Dalia, who they said sought them out as teens and young women on social media, soliciting nudes from them and making unwanted sexual advances. The Sunshine's Time is a daily beat ran at initial reports containing interviews with some of the accusers, and CNN followed up with a piece that had allegations of Dalia exposing himself to women over the years. Dalia vehemently denied the allegations of released an email exchange between himself and his accusers, which his attorneys claimed exonerated him. You know what's funny about the initial claim of him getting exposed? He was the first victim of cancel culture, no, of like pandemic cancel culture, because everybody was at home and bored. And I legitimately think that's what caused his demise. Because when you came out, everyone was at home and bored and on Twitter and social media more. And this girl essentially was browsing and, you know, didn't know what to watch, checking out Netflix, randomly stumbled across you and see fucking Chris Aaliyah plastered all over it and just got pissed and started ranting. And that rant turned into an entire fucking takedown. <laughs> honestly he probably hates the pandemic more than anybody COVID-19 ridiculously like played a huge part in ruining Chris Lear's career and how he's perceived legitimately I think without it I'm not too sure this would have come out or he probably would have got swept under the rug I'm pretty sure um it continues here <laughs> the casting was fucking it was phenomenal and it really um anyway it continues but Wolf's story diverges there um, from theirs in that she stayed in contact with Dalia. You see what I mean about her being a whore? Am I allowed to say that or is that un unfair? She gets in contact with the guy because she's lonely. She sends him nudes in one day of meeting him online. They, She believes his story that he's going to leave his wife for her or that they share some sort of kinship because he doesn't like his wife either. And then after the allegations come out about him potentially being a pedo, she still continues talking to him. Anyway, let's continue. Let's just finish it. Going on going on to have, sorry, but Wolf's story diverges from theirs in that she stayed in contact with Dalia. Going on to have what she describes as an emotionally abusive, manipulative and controlling relationship with the comic until last year. Isn't that your problem? He already told you what he was by his actions. Other women told you how he is and what he does by the actions he does to them. And you willingly went back. That's your own fault. I'm sorry. <laughs> Their relationship took place mostly online, communicating constantly through disappearing messages on Snapchat, apart from the handful of in-person encounters during two trips to LA. So they actually fucked. Wow. Still, the toll on their relationship took was devastating, Wolf claims. Okay, this is her, this is her claim. Let's see if I can eat my words here. <clears throat> I began to actually believe I was nothing and lose such a sense of myself as an individual person because you can only hear something so many times before you start internalize that. Wolf tells the Rolling Stone. Wolf, uh, Rolling Stone has reviewed various communication between Wolf and Delia, photos and videos of Wolf sent to Delia through Snapchat and spoken to friends and members of family who corroborate a relationship with the comedian. The only thing I can think that kind of makes me want to swallow my words here is this. How does he, because it seems like he only... From what I can see, if he notices a girl is attractive, follows him or likes his content, he contacts him. So they have to kind of initiate something in terms of like liking something, sending an Instagram, IG, DM, commenting, and then he kind of slips into the DMs. If that's the case, how is it that he always seems to come across like broken people? or people that are lonely who are going through shit. Because already she mentioned, she's going through some stuff with her husband at home. She's having self-confidence issues, wherever it may be, even if you don't believe her, it is what it is. But what is that all about? Is that just like, if you're an abuser, you just have this magnet that you attract people that are broken and that need love and some, I don't know, whatever. Like, what is that? Like, how is he able to kind of always seem to find these people who, you know, 
what what people would deem to be somewhat damaged goods and take advantage of them like what's happening there i wonder how that's 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 happening or maybe he is currently seeking them out i'm not too sure um oh what's this about here oh no go away i don't want to hear that Free's attorney Andrew <clears throat> Brettler, Delia downplayed the relationship with Wolf and called into question her credibility for entering into early discussions of a possible 100,000 settlement in exchange for cutting off communication with media publications. However, Wolf says she never took any money and ended up blocking Bet- Brettler's number when she felt he was being manipulative. Brettler denied he was being manipulative. So somewhere in their conversation, Delia offered this woman 100,000 or they talked about it as a way to kind of, you know, knock this on the head. This isn't a good defense for Delia. The fact that money is included, is involved in trying to downplay your allegations against you, doesn't make you look less guilty. It makes you look guilty because you're willing to pay somebody to kind of make them shut up personally. Obviously, okay, the answer to the question here. Um, Delia seems to pray on a week. Okay, cool. Amy, he's, you're saying he prays on a week. I understand that. But from what we've seen so far, it seems like they are initiating conversation with him. Not conversation, but interaction. Then he talks to them. So I'm just curious, how do they find each other? I guess it's just a common thing in creeps. Like hurt people find hurt people in a weird way, maybe. I'm not excusing his behavior. I'm just wanting to know, like, how do they... Because it seems like he's... He seems to... He seems to have a lot of luck with these women. That's what I'm trying to get at. Like, he doesn't seem to have a lot of fails. A lot of these women actually go and meet him up. Like, they meet him up, suck him off, they fuck, whatever. Like, shit happens. So I'm wondering, like... How does it happen here? I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just I'm wording the question wrong. Um, Uja's saying, yeah, most really young girls are like that. That's why they creep. That's why creepy old guys prey on them. Okay, that's true. Easy to manipulate. That's very, very true. Dan says, they have such a sixth sense for them. True. Cloud K20 says, I mean to take your pick. It's all over social media. Um, Z says, he seems to know who to target. Maybe he's a sociopath. Some people send new famous people out of the blue. Exactly. Broken people want wild romance. Other broken people take advantage of... Or, yeah, okay. That's easy to describe. Yeah, Amy's got it there. I guess you're right. Um, Severa Design here says, the thing about it is, is that the Leo is addicted to sex and will go after full predator mode. Damn near breaking the lines of what is legal. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's just... it's To me, it's just... It's just... I don't know. I can't wrap my head around it. And I guess we shouldn't be able to because the guy's a sicko. He continues. From this piece, Rolling Stone has spoken with additional nine women who detailed experiences with Delia that have left them shaken, including four women who recall having unsettling encounters and communication with Delia when they were teenagers. <sighs> Fucking hell. So he's a legit pedo. Some women, including those who have previously spoken out against Delia, they can to participate in the story, citing fear of Delia and legal reasons. Jesus Christ. Several women alleged Delia took advantage of godlike status he had with his fans for his personal sexual gratification dangling tickets to his show to at least one woman who claims Delia outright asked if she would perform a sexual favor in exchange for a free seat one fan alleged was 28 when Delia pressured her into giving him oral sex before one of his shows when she began to cry she says Delia allegedly told her if you just do everything I say it'll all be okay This sounds like you're going to be my girlfriend now. That sounds like that kind of vibe, isn't it? Jesus Christ, man. Jesus Christ. When approached to comment, the leader generally denied the claims made against him, but did not provide direct response to Rolling Stone's multiple detailed reports, as they always don't do. Brian Cannon did the same thing. Gets accused of rape, just says, trust me, bro. Everything goes back to normal. Cool, no problem. Um, got a specific allegation beyond questioning the credibility of some of the women coming forward. He previously claimed that all the sexual encounters were legal and consensual. In addition, Rolling Stone has learned the FBI has interviewed several of Chris Talia's accusers and potential witnesses. <gasps> In a statement to Rolling Stone, an FBI spokesperson said the agency neither confirms or denies the investigation to protect the both integrity of the investigation and reputation of potentially involved in it. The leader did not respond to this allegation. Yo, the FBI is looking into this. Okay, for me, this is somewhat comforting a little bit because it was it's getting a bit crazy now. Considering all the initial allegations that came out about him before, considering all the shit that Alice Hamilton and her crew of people have been speaking about him before and that other comedian on social media that's always talking about the Leah and toxic men and shit. I forgot her name, white lady. A bit crazy, but she's always speaking about this shit. 
considering the documentary and i think the documentary last time i i remember speaking about it or last time i viewed it i'm pretty sure the guy that did the documentary said that there were hundreds of women or something or no i think the agent the former manager or someone said there were like hundreds of victims allegedly for me it was getting a bit crazy like how is this guy still walking on the streets if he's got all if he's got like hundreds of women out there who've said he's been sexually abusive pedo type things going on for years it just didn't make any sense after a certain time like how is this guy still podcasting like what's going on like someone give me the lowdown is he ratting on people on the sly does he have a deal with the da the same da that didn't let brendan perform and do he stand up like what's happening here like what's going on what are we doing here like there's too many allegations so this is somewhat comforting to learn that the fbi are looking into it a little bit here wolf and another woman emma said that they were entangled in an intense emotional relationship with delia which allegedly intensified and worsened after delia was accused of predatory behavior in 2020 it intensified after that yo this guy is a sicko bro many of the women have requested to use their pseudonym or any only their first names for fear of retribution and online harassment so do these women think that chris Lea fans are gonna start calling them out in the comments and shit this is how much of a sick fan base he's got that the victims of actual sexual harassment abuse rape predatory behavior pedophilia shit are afraid of coming out in case his fans come and harass them in the comments <laughs> most of them probably other women also with daughters themselves which is sickening to be anyway let's continue wolf emma and two others claimed that delia was controlling allegedly trafficking their location picking out outfits giving curfews pushing some women to get tattoos of his initials how does brendan stand behind this how how and when I'm saying this, do you remember what Brendan Schaub said about Chris Alia? Do you remember? I'll play it for you. This is what Brendan Schaub said about Chris Alia recently, right? In a recent podcast, here's what he said about Brian Kerr and Chris Alia's allegations. I think it's around here. Let me scroll forward a little bit. He says about how he misses the old LA scene and what they had before and how he maybe took it for granted being at a comedy store with his friends. But listen to what he said about the cancellation of Chris Alia and Brian Kerr. When LA shuts down, then Tom Segura leaves. Then Joey Diaz leaves. Then Tim Dillon leaves. Then Theo Vaughn leaves. And then uh, Brian goes through some bullshit Me Too movement. And he has to leave. And Chris D'Elia goes some, through some bullshit Me Too movement. And Chris D'Elia has to leave. And I'm on this island by myself. I'm like, whoa, where's everybody? I thought, let's, all right. Imagine describing Brian Callan's rape allegations as a bullshit Me Too movement and describing Chris Lea's predatory, pedophile, creepy behavior as bullshit Me Too movement. As if it's just a, a date gone wrong, somebody looking for a payday. Maybe there's some women in those ac accounts. I I'm, I'm, don't deny that. There's probably some women in those accounts who have malevolent fucking uh, hopes and dreams, for sure. But... There's way too many to say that all of them are looking for a payday. I I refuse to believe it. There's definitely some truth in the allegations. 100%. We all know this to be true. So why would somebody like a Brendan Shaw be willing to put his family's future on the line for fucking Chris D'Elia? Like, what has he told you in private that can make you so certain that it's a bullshit Me Too movement? What has he told you in private that can make you so certain that you'd start an entirely new podcast with him called The Golden Hour? and put your reputation, your family's future, everything, financial security on the line for Crystalia. That's fucking crazy, personally for me. Like the lack of morals and principles. Like, for me, that's the kind of thing I really do understand with some of these guys is that fair enough, you don't want to get involved, you don't want to say something and speak up, that's cool. But distancing yourself from somebody like this when they're going through some of this shit is understandable. You have to look after yourself. And you have to also think about it. If it happened to you, this is the thing that I, that bugs me when it comes to Brendan. Because again, say what you want about the guy and stuff, but I really do question sometimes his decision making process. Because if Brendan was accused of what Chris Lear was accused of, do you think Chris Lear would start a podcast with him? If Brendan Schaub was accused of what Chris Lear was accused of, do you think Chris Lear would start a podcast with him? He wouldn't. He would tell him to kick rocks. 
he would tell him, oops. There'd be no way he'd do a podcast with him. Absolutely. But Brendan's so desperate for friends, so desperate for clout, so desperate for money, whatever it may be, ticket sales, I don't know, views, that he's willing to put his career on the line for this guy who legitimately is being investigated by the FBI. <laughs> It's fucking insane. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. Um, um, Wolf and Emma describe becoming dependent on his daily instructions and increasingly isolated from their family and friends. Dalia allegedly expected his girls, as he called the women he was sexting, to send over explicit photos and videos instantly. Um, instantaneously, sorry. Otherwise, he'd break and ignore them as a form of punishment. To comply, the women claim they had to be glued to their phones, rushing to public restrooms, and even pulling over on the side of the road to fulfill his request. A frequent instruction Wolf claims was to get on their knees and say she was nothing. We should have known, man. We should have known. We should have known. <clears throat> we should have known. People mentioned Will Sasso. From the moment Will Sasso completely, uh, you know, excommunicated himself from Brian Cannon and Chris and Crystalia, we should have known Crystalia was a real creep, and Brian Cannon also. We should have known what the deal was. When Will Sasso decided never to speak to about those guys or associate with those guys ever again, we should have known. And also the fact that this guy doesn't smoke, doesn't drink, doesn't do any drugs, and acts and looks the way he does. Should have always been in a fucking red flag. Any man with no vice whatsoever, be very wary. Look at that. Look at that face they got of him. <laughs> um, it went far beyond consensual kink relationship, it continues. Both Wolf and Emma claim, explaining that ground rules were never established and Delia deliberately and slowly inducted them into his world, sometimes using his friends to juggle his many secret relationships. Wolf describes the controlling dynamic as a cult like, and both say that they wouldn't have agreed to relationships if they had known Delia would be requiring them of them. Wolf and Emma say when they tried to break things off with the Leah, he would make suicidal statements and plead with them to stay, insisting that they were only the ones who understood him. Okay, this makes complete sense with said before how they attract each other. This manipulative fucking behavior is fucking insane. Um, this past December, comedian Carl Anderson released a documentary on YouTube, The Crystal Leah Problem, that revisited the previous allegations against the Leah and shed light on the emotional, psychological abuse he allegedly inflicted on relationships. Wolf claimed... Um, Wolf came forward in the YouTube documentary about her two-year relationship with Dalia, detailing how she developed anxiety from his request. Emma, who ended her year relationship um, with Dalia in the wake of 2020 allegations, says she realised after watching the documentary that she wasn't the only one suffering through lasting emotional abuse from Dalia, who was either oblivious or indifferent to the damage she was inflicting on the women. In no sense of the word is my life the same, Emma says. I will always struggle with figuring out what feels normal in a relationship because of it. I'm not sure Delia will ever fully understand the scope of what he's done to a lot of women. Delia began his comedy career at 25 doing stand-up at LA clubs. The son of Hollywood producer and director Bill Delia. That might explain why he hasn't been, why he's, you know, that might explain a lot to be fair. He's the son of a Hollywood producer and director. I wonder if Chris Delia's dad is on those Epstein fucking flight logs. I wonder. Hmm. Whose credits have <laughs> include How to Get Away with Murder, Ali McBeal and Grey's Anatomy. Delia snagged a few small parts of one of dad's shows, such as the Boston Hope and Chicago Legal, before landing a co-starring role um, on close friend Whitney Cummings sitcom Whitney in 2011. Hollywood really is the land of fucking the Nepo babies and the rich and famous, isn't it? Whitney Cummings come from a family of people with money. Chris Delia comes from a family of people plugged into fucking, um, you know, Hollywood entertainment industry and shit. It makes complete sense. It makes complete sense. Yeah, yeah. Big up, um, Amy. Peace out. Nice to see ya. <sighs> fucking hell, man. This guy's a sicko. If he gets away with this, life isn't fair. Life isn't fair. 
Let's continue. He in when Vine launched in 2013, Delia became an early star of the sh now shuttered video sharing app, amassing a young fan base with a co-signer Justin Bieber, who declared Delia his favorite comedian, frequently shouting him out on his social media and brought him along to participate in the singer's Comedy Central roast. That same year, he scored his first stand-up comedy special with white male uh, black comic on Comedy Central. Soon after, he began making regular appearances on podcasts, including the Joe Rogan Experience, the 10-minute podcast of his friends, Will Sasso and Brian Callen. <laughs> but despite Delia's rising star in comedy world and television, it was the growing popularity of his comedy podcast, Congratulations, that seemed to relish the most. Launched in 2017, the hour-long podcast became beloved to Delia's rants about his life and pop culture and quickly developed an intensely devoted following something that the leah played heavily into with the join our cult merchandise he was their fearless so he was their fearful leader or daddy his followers were his babies the most loyal of whom were made elders in the fandom they made art crafted rule books got tattoos in honor of the podcast including outlines of chris Lea's face his life rips mantra recognizing um, recognizing the reach of his podcast Leah began booking comedy gigs using the road to connect in person with fans imagine if you've got a chris Lea tattoo on you now life rips babies an outline on your face how dumb you must feel right now um, while on tour, four women across the US and Canada tell Rolling Stone that Delia seemed to preemptively scout out women fans in cities where he was about to perform. Some say that they were plucked from the crowd after Delia had presumably trawled social media for tagged photos and his hashtags. Others claimed what began as a fan reaching out to the favourite comedian turned into a purely sex-focused conversation. All um, have unsettling stories to share about the comedian, painting Chris Delia as a shrewd manipulator and an assessor an assessor of personalities, someone who knew when he was crossing a moral or ethical boundary and almost took clear in doing so. Two women claimed that Delia had offered them free or special tickets to a show, but with strings attached. Prior to a sold out 2014 show in Albany, New York, Lindsay McKern says that she reached out to Delia for help in securing tickets. The two had messaged previously on Facebook a few years earlier and she hoped that she'd remembered her. The quote, one of Chris's first comments when he decided he was going to get back to me in the show was, Well, you suck my dick. She recalls. Chris Delia did not respond for comment. Of course he didn't respond to that. Of course. Because <laughs> she's probably got a screenshot of it. <laughs> in black and white. You can't refute that. Fucking hell. How horny can you be sober? Legit. Surely the horny hours when you're high and drunk make some sense with these summer messages. How can you be completely teetotal and just be firing off suck my dick as a first reply? Jesus Christ. Um, teenagers also were allegedly not off limits for Delia's brazen messages. Delia has previously denied intentionally flirting with minors saying he was never willingly, knowingly pursued any underage woman at any point. That's definitely words of a pedo. I never, I never willingly pursue somebody underage. That is words of a pedo for me personally. <laughs> that is a pedo. That is pedo excuses. It continues here. Samantha Simmons says that she was around 17 years old when Delia offered her VIP tickets to a show in South Carolina. When she mentioned that her mother would be joining her, Simmons claims Delia said that he would need to ditch her mother at some point so they could hang out. She explained that her mum was her ride to the show since she didn't have a driver's license yet, saying she was underage. Delia responded with something of the effect, you're a little young, but allegedly continued to message Simmons and ask her for Snapchat. Simmons never went to the show. The quote, his intentions were very much clear, Simmons says. I'm really grateful that I had the sense to know that he was being a little bit predatory. Simmons' mother corroborated her daughter's account to the Rolling Stones, recalling Delia continued to message her daughter despite knowing that she was underage. Delia did not respond to the claim. Okay, did the mother step in and tell the guy to stop messaging her daughter? Did the mother go and tell the daughter to block him? Or were they... <sighs> I don't know. This is sick, bro. The fact that he's talking to a 17-year-old is legitimately the first point of contention. At no point should Chris Lear be speaking to anybody under the age of fucking 18, 19, 20, 21. 
this guy is an old man. He shouldn't be talking to anybody, really, personally speaking, especially with his rap sheet. And then telling him to ditch your mum at the comedy show. What's she meant to do? Sneak off to the toilets and sneak off into your green room? What? <sighs> Simone Rossi says she was 16 when he she began messaging Delia, who sulked when she disclosed that she didn't live in LA, but was from Arizona. The quote, how are we supposed to make out then? He wrote in July 2014, before asking Rossi for photos of herself. He was asking to make out of a 16-year-old. That's pedo. What else could be said? That's pedo shit. Rossi says she sent a photo of herself in a pool. Delia reached out to Rossi again in January 2015, this time saying that he was in Tempe, Arizona. The day before a scheduled show, asked if they could hang out. Both Rossi and Delia say he stopped messaging Rossi after he asked for her Instagram handle, where her age is clearly apparent. <sighs> Again, I don't know about this one because I think this is the girl that got verified on Instagram. A lot of the Chris Lear fans were pissed off that she was using the clout and the attention to get very I don't know. There's a there's some there's some things about this, but in general, the fact that he's talking to 16 year 17 year olds is legitimately vomit inducing. Shit. When Rossi shared the exchanges on Twitter in 2020, it prompted an outpouring of similar allegations, which paved the way for others to realize that they weren't alone. But Rossi says she's still dealing with anxiety and paranoia due to the onslaught of online harassment she received. See? The quote, It's been a healing process for me. There's been times where I didn't think I'd make it out the other end since I've come forward, Rossi adds. The only reason I'm speaking today on this matter is to possibly help at least one person who's really trying hard to find their voice, who may not know what they went through was wrong. Delia did not respond or offer a response or rebuttal to Rossi's claim. Of course he didn't. So this is going to get worse before it gets better. This article is meant to basically encourage more victims to come out and feel comfortable to say something. So we're going to get another slew of fucking allegations. If this guy's on the golden hour next episode, you know these guys are sickos. And they don't care about their career. These guys are pure sickos and they must have crazy skeletons in their own closet. If they let this guy on the golden hour, these guys are fucking insane. It continues. A Jane Doe sued Chris Lear in March 2021, alleging that she was 17 when she met the Lear through her social media in September 2014. She came the comedian constructed manipulative, controlling, and abusive dynamic, and solicited received scores of explicit photos and videos of the high schooler, and had encouraged her to attend his comedy show in Connecticut that November, where they had sex after the show. The Lear denied the allegations. The following month, Jane Doe withdrew her lawsuit. Her attorney declined to comment when approached by Rolling Stone. So this sounds like she got paid off. If you're alleging what happened to the 100,000 person before. But somebody is accusing him of fucking a 17-year-old. <sighs> uh, it continues. Aspiring comedian Jill. This is somebody in the scene. Holy shit. Oh. Shit. who's not put their name forward okay aspiring comedian jill was new to la in early 2012 when the 19 year old began messaging the leo on twitter and in emails in late 2011 according to communication reviewed by rolling stone weeks later she went on to crystal leah's sherman oaks apartment um, but when things began escalating jill says she told the leo she wasn't interested in having sex because she was a virgin the quote i saw his eyes light up he was like, does that mean if I had sex with you, it would hurt you, right? Jill says the comment made her feel unsafe and she quickly left. The quote, that was the day I learned that celebrities are not safe. Just because they're celebrities does not mean they're safe. Delia did not respond to this comment, to the claim. God almighty. God almighty. <sighs> Haley says she met the Leo in LA in 2014. Was surprised that he had remembered what the 22-year-old had moved from Nashville. No, sorry, let's give you that again. Haley said that she met the Leo in LA in 2014 and was surprised that he had remembered that the 22-year-old had moved to Nashville when he reached out in August 2017 to invite her to his up-and-coming show, providing two free tickets. Alone after a friend left following Delia's first set, Haley recalls accepting a drink from a male member of Crystalia's entourage. 
that's one of the original group that kind of ditched him, isn't it? Those guys fucking ditched Chris Lea quicker than anybody. Which is funny because Brendan stood by him more, even though Chris Lea is not really his friends. Chris Lea's own friends ditched him, but Brian, Chris, Brian, Brendan didn't, which is weird. Anyway, um, the 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 it was the last no yeah. Haley recalls accepting a drink from a male member of Chris Lea's entourage. It was the last thing she remembers before waking up in her own bed the next morning. According to Haley, the venue had to call one of her friends after she was found unresponsive in the bathroom and dumped in the green room where she lay on the couch until the venue closed. People pointed out to me afterwards that they were like, he just left you, Haley says. A friend at the time corroborated the incident, saying the venue was even considering calling an ambulance to assist Haley. The delivery was spent to the request to comment. Now, I don't know why this story is included here. This seems a bit weak. Do they mean it was the last thing she remembered before waking up in her own bed. So what happened here? She got given a drink. Is she alleging that somebody from Chris Lea's camp spiked it? But then she woke up and she was in a green room. It doesn't say she woke up and she felt like she got violated or anything. What are they kind of insinuating here? It seems a bit weird, this one. I don't really get this one. Why did they include this one here? It seems a bit of a non-story. Did she get spiked? Was she too fucked up from drinking too much? Did she have other stuff? But there's no instance here that kind of says something happened to her. It says that Chris Lea just left her. Like, of course, Chris Lea leaving her is a shitty thing to do. But the guy is, you know, he's he's clearly not a good date in any way, shape or form. Let's make that clear. So I'm not really sure why they included this. Maybe I'm missing something, but I don't get the... I get, I, I get that she's insinuated maybe something got spiked, but I don't see where she got violated in any way, shape or form. It's not looking like that. Anyway, it continues. Jenna says that she was in her late 20s when she began sending Chris Lea nude photos after messaging him as a fan in 2018. What Jenna thought was a flirty exchange turned into Delia choosing her nail colour, asking questions about her waist size, pushing her to get a tattoo in honour of him. Quote, it didn't take long, sorry, it did take a big toll on me, she says of her months long communication. It was exhausting. You don't want to be at someone's snap of a finger, do what they want or get reprimanded for it. It was not a, way, a nice way to live or to feel. Delia did not respond or request for comment. <laughs> to request for comment. Of course he's not going to respond. Amanda Cooper was a 28-year-old super, Chris Delia super fan, made an elder on congratulations in October 2017 for constantly promoting the podcast. The two had briefly flirted on Snapchat in 2014, which ended with Cooper saying she refused Aaliyah's lewd request of showing him her vagina and failed to turn up to one of his shows. Still, Cooper remained a fan and was stoked when Chris Aaliyah um, let her know that she had booked a show in a small hometown of North, ba of North Battlefield, Sas Sasquana, Canada, for February 2018. I obviously felt special, but I also felt like, why would a guy that sells 20,000 person arenas come to this place? This is probably a an easy question to answer. But do some of these comedians book shows specifically based on the girls they're talking to on their DMs? That is insane. I guess if you're famous enough, you can kind of bet on yourself in terms of Brendan Shaw speak. Wow. They're legitimately booking shows in random venues just based on who's on their DMs. Oh, look who's in the picture. Look at this. <laughs> anyway, let's continue here. Um, one night before the show, Cooper says she got a message from Delia asking her to meet at him at the hotel. She recalls Delia previously making a comment about head only when discussing their meetup, but she brushed off the comment. Cooper went over to the hotel and claims Delia quickly began putting his hands all over me. The dynamic further shifted when Cooper says when Delia instructed her to get on her knees. Was between Delia and arm and couch, Cooper says she felt coerced, um, sorry, cornered and scared and lowering herself to the ground while shaking and crying. He grabbed me by my face because I was crying and he says, look at me. I couldn't look at him, obviously. I didn't want to look at him. He said, if you just do everything I say, it'll be okay. And I thought, okay. Cooper says Dalia then made her perform oral sex on him, instructing her throughout and at one point suggesting, suggestively asked her how old she was. <sighs> 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 A 
a friend of Cooper confirmed. What's so? What's so? Okay, I didn't see that here. Um, AJ, I posted a link to the Jill girl on the article telling her story on the Deaf Noodles podcast last year. Twelve forty timestamp. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Uh, is that you? What do you mean, sir? What do you mean, Sarah Devon? What do you mean? Is that me? What? What is me? Okay, let's check this out here. Thank you, Jeff, for the link. Appreciate you. God Almighty, mate. God Almighty. If this guy survives this, like, you know, life just truly is unfair. And it would be a fucking weird dent to the victims, isn't it? No matter what you kind of go through, unless there's really, really hard evidence, it's fucking hard to get these guys convicted of this shit. Anyway, let's, let's play this. Death Noodles, let's see here. Let's get this off of mute. Come on. Oh, it's Ash, that's Alice Hamilton, right? Yeah. Big up Alice Hamilton, mate. She fucking stirred the pot, kept on badgering these comedians, and essentially, criminal, which is... it kind of worked out in the end, to be honest. She fought the fight, and she, she probably got herself in a lot of trouble, I'm pretty sure, Alice Hamilton, in the scene. Probably lost a lot of bookings off the back of it, but again, somebody with morals, principles ethics common decency calling out what's wrong so I appreciate alice hamilton to be fair i'm not gonna lie even if you don't think her stand-up is fucking good or not or she don't think she's funny she's fucking got bigger balls than a lot of actual male stand-up comedians out there let's play it up to being a sex addict but like nothing else and then he yeah. said i've never met up with any of those women it's like because of what happened to me, like I was literally in his place. I mm -hmm. made out with him mm -hmm. and I hate that. I hate mm -hmm. that memory. But I'll tell you what he said to me because it still haunts me. Mm -hmm. um, so we like had made out. I was still a virgin at the time. Jesus and so Christ. I Well, first of all, the reason we even started talking was because, mm -hmm. like I said, I was a fan of his. So I tweeted at him. Mm -hmm. Bad idea. Mm -hmm. He responded back with his email. Ugh. Just his email. Wow. Nothing, nothing else. DM just sent me his email. Just looked at the picture and was like, oh, okay. Yes. And me, like a young, budding comic, new to LA, 19, mm -hmm. fresh out of rehab. Like, I was so fucking raw and vulnerable. Uh. I was like, this is so cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was also used to dating college kids, which college kids, all you do is you go to their place and you hook up. So mm -hmm. I thought that that was normal life. That's mm -hmm. what adults do. So we start talking over email, flirting. And then like, it was probably a few months of that. Um, then I finally did go over to his place. It was probably like 10 PM, went to his place. I like couldn't get into, I remember it all so fucking clear, which says that like this really stuck with me. Mm -hmm. I buzz his doorbell and he was like mad at me that he had to come down and get me because I couldn't figure out his doorbell. Like he was already setting the tone of mm -hmm. like, you did something wrong. You're bad. Like mm -hmm. it's an honor for you to be here. Mm -hmm. And I should be like sucking his dick literally and metaphorically. Mm -hmm. So then I get in there. Energy is so weird. Um, we small talk. I'm like with his two little fucking yappy dogs who he always oh. posts. Then we like made out and then I told him, like, hey, FYI, I'm a virgin. So, like, I'm not going to have sex. Then he says, so if you're a virgin, does that mean it would hurt if we had sex? Fuck, you know. Wow. Immediately, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to get raped tonight. Like, that mm. was so fucking terrifying. And mm. then within five minutes, I was like, I, I have to go. Mm. I have to get out of here. Yeah. And, um, but this, I didn't leave before he accused me of drugging him because he started, what? yeah, it was so weird. Cause you know, he's Rejection. like sober, he's yeah. sober. And so he like was really drowsy and he had admitted to me that someone at the comedy store gave him a pill. And I was like, I didn't drug you. You just told me 10 minutes ago that someone gave you a pill, uh -huh. whatever. So then I left. And then the next day he texted me and he was like, I'm sorry about last night. You seem like a really nice girl. I'd love to take you out for coffee. And then I never contacted him again. Yeah. And that stuck with me for fucking years. And I would mm -hmm. see him around and I'd be like, that was such, that was such a weird moment. But maybe it was just a bad night. And then eight years later, all of this comes out. And this was January. I checked our emails the other day. This was January 2012. Mm -hmm. So this was when he had just gotten on Whitney. Mm -hmm. It was the big, I can, I can guess the beginning of his journey of doing this to women. January 2012. 2012, he was doing this shit. 
yo, if this guy doesn't end up in the prison sometime soon, life truly isn't fair. 2012. 2012. So God knows how many women there were Mm -hmm. and girls, Mm -hmm. teen girls there were after me and before me. And just like, he's so disgusting. I don't know. And to think, to think, to think, right? This is the, this is the same people like just, just play this in your mind. Right. Cause this is this just always make me laugh. This 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 just please play this play this in your mind when you think about these allegations. Twenty twelve, and look at these guys how they responded to the allegations when you got cancelled the first time. The sobbing, the tears, the tears and the sobbing from this guy who was a known creep since twenty twelve. But apparently the swelling will go. Yeah, Josie Masters, you're right. Be prepared to be very disappointed. Honestly, I swear to God, if he doesn't, if he, with this amount of accounts out there, if he doesn't end up in prison in some way, shape or form or in the courts or something, if we don't see him standing in court, fucking having charges read against him, whatever, even if he doesn't spend no time in prison, but something happening, life truly isn't fair. Life truly isn't fair. Like, what the fuck? There's m- literally hundreds of victims in. If this is 2012, he's been doing this shit, there's probably hundreds of victims. Go down. And then, That's looks, what and then it looks better? Apparently, this is, this is, this is permanent. You look so. like you got <gasps> stung by... It doesn't hurt, though. The-, oh, the news, if you're alive, uh, if you've been following this Twitter thing the way we have, uh, you know what's going on with our... This Twitter thing friend chris i'm not you know that when these situations people in hollywood tell you what to say and um I, 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 and i said to brennan what we can do is tell the truth and i'm not going to sit here i'm a man and i define myself on how i respond to these situations in real time when the pressure's really on and so this is what i'll say um i always knew chris is a ladies man i have never and i'm gonna say this i have never seen or heard of him doing anything illegal, ever. Um, this is as shocking to me as I'm watching this happen. I don't know what to think, and I don't know what to say. I don't. Um, this response is okay when the first allegations came out. But then standing by the guy, making a podcast with him, calling the allegations bullshit me too shit, is batshit insane. But I have... I'm going to say it again. I have personally never heard or seen him do anything illegal. That's all I can say. And right now I have to believe that because he's still a friend. And, and, and it may be unpopular to say that, but I, I don't know what else to say. Your friend's a pedo. Don't you have a daughter? Don't you have some shame? Like, isn't his daughter like a teenager or something? Like around the ages of Chris Alia has been accused of grooming and trying to get interested with i swear no doesn't brian kind of have like an actual teenage daughter he's old enough to have one imagine there's no part of you as you know protective instincts kick in and be like you know what even though you're my friend i just can't be around you anymore bro. you got this pedo stink on you i can't have you around i can't be around you i've got daughters man just stand on something these guys have no principles no morals no nothing as long as there's money attached with it They'll turn, they'll turn the blind eye. I don't know what else to do. And I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be some, uh, I, I, I just think it's an impossible situation. And uh, I'm, I'm just at a loss. I'm at a loss. And I'm praying, I'm praying that um, what I'm hearing isn't true. Maybe that's the best way to put it. I, I can't talk. talk. It's just, you know, it's like. Talk. If these guys have him on Golden Hour, I'm fucking bemused. It's a weird thing because I said to, to Brennan, I said, it's like, um, you know, it's, it's like watching someone die or something. And also, it's I just, just I, <laughs> you know, I have, we I haven't, could, it's important to say we haven't spoken to Chris. No. And 
fucking spineless piece of shit. I'm we've shark. never been we've never been on the road with him. I, you know, never. I was on the road with him um, about 14 years ago once. Um, 14 years ago once, the guy who he started 10 minute podcast with, the guy who he went on tour with numerous times, involved in skits. They were planning to do a Netflix show together that got cancelled because they both got accused of some creepo shit. I've never hung out with him. What? I've never hung out with him. We don't have dinner. We're not that good friends. But he's still my friend. Excuse me? When he was, uh, you know, just beginning. But I've never been on the road with him. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to think and I don't know. Liar. And that's what's so frustrating. It's. I'm just sad. Yeah. I'm sad. I don't... So anyway... Yeah, sometimes that's the best thing to say is to say I don't know what to say, and I'm just um, I don't know, man. Yeah, it's a it's it's a fucked up thing. By the way, you never saw Brendan cry like this on camera when allegedly his wife had a mixed carriage, when his wife's grandma passed away. Everything he cried about is redacted. That video of all his friends thanking him for doing his comedy special, he sobbed like a baby. When Chris Leo got accused of being a pedo, he sobbed like a baby. <laughs> the guy is sick in the head. I can't talk. Fuck. Well, that's appropriate. That's appropriate right now. You can just you can just pray that uh, <clears throat> that nothing's true. Because no matter what the facts are whatever comes out i'm as shocked as anyone i'm hurt i'm mad, mad. I'm, I'm, I'm 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 fucking, fucking mad, mad man man i'm and mad man. at him i can't I'm, talk I can't. okay <laughs> all-time classic fucking hell anyway back to the article finish it quickly um <sighs> A friend of Cooper's confirmed to Rolling Stone that Cooper had told them about the events that night and the Leah Fruit's attorney came the encounter was consensual and Cooper was not credible and had changed her story about the encounter since she posted on YouTube um, alleged assault where she discussed consent and grey areas of sexual encounters. After reports about the Leah began circulating online in 2020, Cooper added her own story to the dialogue, making several YouTube videos about her experience. It took me until 2020 that nobody else came out to the terms. No, sorry, let's read it again. It took me until 2020 that everybody else came out um, to, to come to terms with how um, he did that to me on purpose. Cooper explains, he came to my tiny little hometown. He made me an elder. He did all that just to get power over me. Fuck. Despite their, distant, yeah, their long distance relationship and primarily talking over Snapchat videos, Wolf says Dalia told her, he loved her within a matter of weeks, began calling her girlfriend and discussed Wolf moving to LA so they could be closer. Wolf felt similarly, um, although now she recognizes the rapid escalation of their relationship as love bombing. Wolf traveled to LA three times to see Dalia, but he only met up with her on two of those trips. It soon became clear to Wolf that Dalia wasn't monogamous, which she explained to her and she accepted. But Wolf says Dalia had different expectations for her. He wanted full commitment from me, Wolf says, which she eventually honoured by getting his initials tattooed on her neck in the shape of a heart. Wolf later had the tattoo turned into a broken heart. I wasn't allowed to speak to other men. He would ask me for screenshots if men reached out to me. Fucking hell. Um, Dalia's controlling side slowly crept out Wolf says he allegedly began making comments about not wanting Wolf to dress too sexy which resulted in her laying outfits out for Dalia to approve oh my god he monitored her location and if she was out with her friends Wolf claims Dalia decided how much she could drink and what time that they, she could be home Wolf says that she relapsed into eating disorders dropping into an unsafe 100 pounds due to Chris Lear's encouragement to stay thin petite for him even though she knew she had struggled with her body images sorry body image issues there are certain things that should not that should have been red flags but I never expected how severe they would get I just thought okay that's a little odd I never would have thought that the control would have gotten so intense Wolf says that she gradually came to learn of the scale of it, that the Leah had come, that the Leah had women across the country doing his bidding. 
one of his prevailing fantasies, Wolf claims, was having a harem-like house where his girls would all stay, each fulfilling a different sexual desire for of his. Going so far as to put in Wolf in contact with other and other women so that they could be roommates. He made a comment about how much, about how once he has girls living together, he had, um, sorry, let's read that again. Um, he made a comment about how once he had his girls living together, how he'd want them to be a girl who just simply cleans him after a sexual encounter. All right. Um, there was another instance, Wolf says, where she learned that the extent of this, um, uh, of his other relationships, when Delia asks Wolf to send him a video of herself topless on her knees saying, I'm a Delia girl. Minutes after sending the video, Wolf claims Delia sent her several Snapchat videos, each of different women on their knees repeating the same phrase. At least a dozen women were sending Delia nude photos and videos regularly. Wolf and Emma estimate. They were girls, they were his girls and each considered themselves to be in some form of relationship with or fling with Delia. Much like Wolf, they were all expected to send explicit footage um, of Delia upon his command. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder what the wife thinks. Because the wife has been ride or die for Chris for a long time. How does the wife think? Now these other, like, what's the wife going to do? When, if he gets, get, she's going to file for divorce, does she stay with him? I wonder. Um, It continues here. Emma was among, no, did I read that already? Yeah, Emma was among those women. The then 22-year-old began messaging Delia in 2019. As many other women's accounts, Emma has says the conversation turned sexual over Snapchat. For the next year, Emma describes having a relationship with Delia that mirrored the experiences of Wolf, with Delia allegedly growing more controlling, particularly by monitoring Emma's whereabouts. She recalls running a nice dinner. Sorry, she recalls running... No, sorry, she recalls ruining a nice dinner with friends when Delia gave her a near impossible curfew in the middle of the email. Although Emma wound up beating the clock, there was no prize in meeting Delia's demands. That's the whole point, Emma explains. The reward was that he wasn't mad at me. Delia didn't respond to a request for comment. It was this fear that Delia cut enough communication that Emma says made her comply with things that she'd never do otherwise. It wasn't for COVID restrictions, shutting down tattoo parlors. Emma says she would have likely honored Chris Lear's request to be branded with his initials. It's one of those things that when you're in it, you don't see it getting worse. And then looking back and talking about it now, it's crazy, she says. It happens so quietly. It just builds and builds until those kinds of things seem normal to you. Alexa, who requested to be identified by only her first name, used to describe herself as one of Delia's babies. The then 18-year-old um, clinging onto Delia's comedy when she went into a treatment for her eating disorder in August 2019. After briefly messaging Delia on Instagram, Alexa met up with him in August after one of his shows in San Jose, California, according to screenshots reviewed by The Rolling Stone. Alexa says that she performed oral sex on him at his hotel room. Still in recovery, Alexa says Delia's attention became a lifeline to her, believing that he cared about her well-being, claiming that he would check in with her about her treatment, asking about her weight and requesting her to step on the scale for him. Over time, Alexa says Delia became extremely possessive, only allowing her to call him daddy, calling her girls, calling her his girl and becoming angry if she hung out with boys. Delia did not respond to a comment, did not respond to a request for comment. Fucking hell, mate. That is some sick shit. <sighs> that October, Alexa flew down to LA and caught one of Delia's shows at the Laugh Factory where he allegedly had saved a free ticket for her in a ticket booth. That's actually the place that I actually saw Delia perform, actually. All those years ago that I went to watch watch him. I think that was 2017. It probably was. Along, sorry, alone with $6 in her pocket, Alexa says that she could barely cover her sodas required by the club's two-drink minimum. Delia briefly said hello ahead of his set, giving Alexa a hug and making small talk. After the show, Alexa says Delia said he'd meet her outside, but it took two and a half hours for him to emerge from the club. This is why I don't believe all these other comedians who say that they didn't know. Because you remember before Chris Delia got cancelled, the common sort of inside joke about Chris Delia was that all his shows were full of girls. Young girls kind of waiting and, you know, wanting to get his attention. 
And that's a fact. I know for myself, having gone to a show of his in 2017 in Laugh Factory, I think Tiffany Haddish was the MC. That's how long ago it was when she was still kind of coming up. And I remember being surprised, like, raw, I didn't know that. I didn't know that many girls come to comedy shows. And then somebody else sitting next to you was in a hostel who kind of went to a few of those shows. Like, nah, it's not, it's not, it's not usually like this. It's because of the comedians who are performing. And then of course, Chris Lear came on to headline. I was like, oh, this makes a lot of sense. Especially because the crowd went fucking crazy when he came on. Like he had, you know, it's like a fucking concert hall. I'm here with these girls screaming in the crowd. So these comedians say that they didn't know nothing are lying because everybody spoke about before he got cancelled, how they only, it's the only comedy shows you'd go to where you'd actually see attractive women or young girls and shit. It continues. Eventually, I get a text and he says he's around the block, Alexa says. Getting into the car and only to have Delia to do a lap around the block before parking right where she got in. <laughs> Sicko. The encounter lasted 15 minutes. Ultimately, he was there for one thing, Alexa says. I performed oral and then he said, we should fuck next time. It was the first time, it was the first big wake up call for her. I think I, that was probably my first, like, I don't think he cares about me. Alexa began to gradually pull away and weasel out of the relationship. And by the time Delia faced his reckoning, Alexa was able to observe from a distance, immediately recognizing what had transpired was wrong on Delia's part. Legally, he knew exactly what he was doing and that he was being okay. But morally, anybody in their right mind would be disgusted. We were both legal adults. I had been, I had, I had about four months to practice being a legal adult and he had 20 plus years to practice. I had to learn the hard way because he chose to take advantage of somebody who didn't know the difference between right and wrong. Throughout the years, Delia has remained tight-lipped about his relationships. After his divorce from his first wife, actress Emily Montague in 2010, he is rarely spotted in public with women. The playbook applied when, um, then the same playbook applied when around 2018 he began dating his now wife Kristen Taylor, who he proposed to in September 2019 and welcomed the son Calvin with in February 2020. By that time, in June, Delia's painstaking attempts to keep his many different lives separate were obliterated by Rossi's tweets and the surge of women sharing their legend counsel with Delia. Wolf recalls noticing Delia's name on Twitter trending and reaching out to give him a heads up, which he allegedly hurried in logically before going dark for two weeks. Both Wolf and Emma separately expressed feeling confused about the allegations and unsure what to do in Delia's sudden absence. You've been caged for a year and then you can do whatever you want, Emma explains. I literally didn't know what to do because I had somebody telling me what to do all the time. Other women began to find each other through social media and whisper networks, trying to piece together what happened. There was a definite moment in tw June 2020 when I was like, I think something bad happened to me, Emma says. That was the first time that I realized maybe how bad the situation was because I didn't realize the whole gravity of it until it fell apart. Then suddenly Delia was back. He reached out under a new Snapchat name to the women, denying allegations, issuing reassurance and trying to get back to normalcy. After being in a state of anxiousness for weeks, Wolf says she was willing to accept whatever reason Delia gave her. I had already lost so much of myself, I felt completely lost when we weren't in contact with him or for some time, she explains. Delia was also guilt-tripping her, Wolf claims, being less focused on denying the allegations and more so in complaining that he was being abandoned by his friends and peers. Emma felt similarly um, feeling almost burdened with Chris Lear's supposed mental health struggles. I didn't know if I stopped, should stop talking to him and if he would increase it. So it was almost easier to be kind in the moment. So he's complaining about Whitney Cummings, you know, excommunicating himself for her, Joe Rogan, all this sort of shit. If ever he was pissed off about a Joe Rogan thing, you should kind of throw that in the bin because that's completely over now. Meanwhile, Delia remained off social media until February 2021, returning with a 10 minute video. This one here. It's been a while. Um, explaining his absence. He says, as I quote, sex controlled my life. Delia said in the apology video, admitting that he cheated on his then fiance Taylor. It was my focus at the t all the time and I had a problem. I do have a problem. I need to do work on that. He acknowledged the unfair power dynamic, saying he used the familiarity that he had with his fans to have sex with them. But Aaliyah was adamant that while the situation um, looks bad, it doesn't show the full scope of what's happened. Adding, I stand by the fact that all my relationships have been consensual, legal. That's the truth. Obviously, it's not. 
um, there was an immediate shift in Delia's outward persona. His Instagram, which had previously featured bits of Delia's stand-up routines, clips of his podcast, suddenly showcased a softer side with family photos, video sprinkled with his feed. Slowly, Delia began to distance himself from the stain of the scandal, so much so that he began performing again at comedy clubs. His YouTube channel regularly brings in tens of thousands of views. His TikTok is thriving with 2.0 million followers. He launched an advice podcast called Lifeline with his brother Matt and kicked off a new stand up comedy tour this January but behind the scenes the reformed image of Dalia had desperately tried to scrape together was slowly beginning to fall apart in private once back in touch with Dalia in summer 2020 but Wolf and Emma claim that not only did Dalia's manipulative and controlling behavior continue it escalated Wolf says Dalia's sexual demands became a lot darker and more intense once directing her to pee her pants and show him huh his overall mood had darkened, they say, and gone where the casual conversations about their days. And gone with the casual conversations about their days, sorry. The bulk of their conversation centered around the Lee's needs and his sexual demands. After the fall happened, it was much more tumultuous. The good days were good and the bad days were terrible. You just try to make sure that on the bad days, you tiptoe around them so you don't set off something. Slowly, Wolf and Emma began to break away from the Leah. It was too weird for me, Emma explains. I couldn't do it in a clear conscience. I couldn't do it knowing that Kristen was there. I couldn't do it knowing that they have a kid. I don't need to be on all this at this point. I kind of bowed out of it. Wolf says her first attempt to detach herself from, from him came in December 2021. I was becoming more and more aware of gaslighting, she explains. I was incredibly fed up. I snapped and said, I can't do this. I value my morals so much more than what I'm getting out of this. I'm getting nothing out of this but stress and panic and pain. By April 2020, Wolf says she was gone. In August 2022, Wolf wanted closure and confronted Delia in a video call about how, about the way she treated her and made her feel dehumanized, especially encouraging of her eating disorder. In recorded conversation reviewed by Rolling Stone, Delia claims that he had no idea he was affecting her. Yeah, fucking right. After pausing the, to ask Wolf where she was um, and reassuring her, reassuring him by showing an empty room, he continues, I don't ever want people to feel bad about themselves. You know that, don't you? Later in the conversation, Delia tries to coax Wolf into deleting all their communication as well as anonymous posts that she had made, along with other women, about her story on Reddit. If you don't mind, deleting all that stuff would definitely help me with people sending me death threats and shit, he says. Imagine him pretending to be the victim. What a piece of shit. What a legitimate, bona fide piece of shit. God almighty. Meanwhile, Kyle Anderson um, and Felicia Martinez had slowly began working on their Delia YouTube documentary since 2020. When Wolf began making social media posts about Delia, they swung into full force, adding Wolf to the documentary, seeking out new accusers and putting final edits on the interview that they had already recorded. Delia's former tour manager, Zach Don Covio, came forward in the documentary, hoping his name and recounting that he had witnessed while working with Delia from summer from 2018 to 2019 would help lend some credibility to the woman's stories. He claims to have witnessed Delia profusely seeking out women while on tour and meeting women whom Delia was flying out to hook up with on the road. I saw multiple girls on multiple occasions come out of the hotel room and look on their face that was a disgusted look, he tells Rolling Stone. It was those things that were red flags when I started thinking, oh, something isn't right. Don Covio went on to call the Leah predatory and a monster in a documentary. Airing in late December, the documentary sparked some rumbling on social media, particularly on Reddit, where the Leah fans and critics began discussing the allegations. Some were outright disturbed. Others felt duped by the Leah's confessions of being changed. Um, even more were protective of Delia, mocking Anderson's pedigree, doubting the women's stories and going on the defensive for their favourite comedian. After a group began making plans on social media to protest outside of Hollywood Improv at the same day as Delia's performance, the show was suddenly cancelled without reason reported by the Rolling Stone. Delia's book later claimed of conflict in Delia's schedule. Delia remained silent. 
In his first podcast after the documentary, he avoided the accusations, instead disclosing that he had entered rehab in November. Wolf says the timing of this day was shortly after he contacted Leah's wife Taylor in early November, according to screenshots reviewed by the Rolling Stone, and offered her evidence that he had been affairs with multiple women throughout their marriage. Taylor seemed to accept Wolf's story, according to multiple screenshots of text messages reviewed by the Rolling Stones, asking Wolf um, <clears throat> if she would be willing to talk on the phone with me. And within multiple, and with him, sorry, what? Asking Wolf if she would be willing to talk on the phone with me and him within a therapeutic setting. Both of our therapists on the phone. I need all the information as we move through this. Yo, Crystalia's wife sounds like a bit of a sicko herself, mate. She wanted to get on the phone with the with the victims and the therapist. What? The Liz attorney denied Taylor had ever recommended a group therapy session between a couple and Wolf saying the claim could not be further from the truth. Wolf says that she never heard from either Taylor or Delia again, only learning about through the podcast and the couple seemed to be addressing the allegation of cheating by Delia entering the rehab. Days after the episode aired, Taylor announced that she and Delia were expecting their child, the second child, and Taylor gave birth to a son earlier this month. Throughout the conversation with many women who spoke on this piece, many described f feeling frustrated that Delia and his fans have harped on about his recovery and journey, his atonement and the career pitfalls he suffered, while disbrandishing the women as liars, dismissing their feelings or outright excusing Delia's behaviour. The quote, I am not deflecting my part in it, which I, I like this acknowledgement here, but uh, he's deflecting his, and that's the biggest issue. Agreed. Alexa points out, when he wrote it off as a sex addiction, everyone was like, he needs help. He needs help. What about the girls that fell victim to his sexual addiction? There's so much collateral damage that was done that you don't just write it off with, I'm an addict and I'm going to get help. What about the stuff that happened before you admitted it? That still happened. 100% agree. What a good point. None of the women say that they ever received any form of apology from Delia about how he treated them apart from the generic public apology video in 2021. It was the main reason Emma felt complied, compelled sorry, to move forward, feeling that they're refusing to acknowledge the ruin he left on his wake. I do think some people walked off a walked away differently, Emma says. But if you continued to a conversation with him and had a relationship with him, you probably ended up in about the same. The only outcome was ever going to be emotional scarring or emotional abuse. Many are adamant that speaking out now is about cancelling Delia. Several don't believe he's ever been cancelled, pointing to his current national way, national nationwide tour, the success of his YouTube channel and thriving podcasts. The quote, I don't care about cancelling him, Jill says. What I want now, what I think a lot of victims want, is accountability, honesty and for justice to be served by him stopping abusing women. As for Wolf, she hopes that others who were also in similar situation with Alia are able to finally can come to a place of healing. There are there are people, there are real people who have gone through, and in some cases are currently going through such deep rewiring processes due to the abuse that they've experienced. She says they deserve acknowledgement. They deserve to feel okay about sharing their experience, and I hope through the truth coming to light that they were able to find that. Men in positions such as Chris's will continue to have the same pattern of behavior as long as they get away with it. I hope in Chris's case, that ends now. Fucking hell. That was a lot. That was heavy. And um, yeah, the guys are sicker, man. The guys are sicker. If he somehow avoids a really far investigation from any kind of you know fbi police whatever it may be then life truly isn't fair because it sounds like there is a hundreds of victims who have got documented and proven corroborated accounts of his that are really really suspect if he's able to get away with it it says a lot about how broken the justice system is in general that guys can essentially get away with this or that people can get away with this in general it's fucking horrible monstrous shit and I just can't still boggle in the mind that Brendan and fucking Brian Callen are putting their career, entire careers and, you know, putting their reputations on the line for here, this guy, man. It's fucking crazy, to be honest. It makes no sense. You have to be so sure in your own self that he didn't do any of this stuff. And this is all just like what? Him being a sex addict. 
him just being too freaky and horny. There's no morals or no ethics or principles when it comes to what? How many women has he cheated his wife with? Like 1,000? <laughs> Is that not good? Is that a good thing also? He has kids. He's probably, what, fucked how many kids in between each kid's birth? 500? 100? 200? Less than 100? Shit, bruh. And then the 16, 17-year-old, 18-year-old accounts, like, I don't know. Crazy account. Um, again, Rolling Stone did a pretty thorough job on this regard. I'm curious to see what the fallout from this will be. First of all, Golden Hour podcast, will it be on the next episode? Because they don't film them ahead of time. They don't bank of them like them, your mum's house stuff. So most likely, if he is on the next episode, that says a lot about those guys co-signing him and essentially, you know... Um, being okay with all this shit which is fucking crazy really um, because it's none of their business really it's only on him but the fact that they would sit next to him and do the show is going to make them look crazy i'm also curious to see what's going to be happening in terms of his up and coming bookings in comedy clubs and shit would that be affected i probably doubt it and this also kind of explains why he's been in the pissy mood on the gold now in general he was complaining about the industry talking about quitting acting talking about the hollywood talking about cancel culture he had a really kind of sad face when eric griffin was talking about his you know um weekender at the comedy mothership he probably feels a bit away about not being invited back into the fold and being rogan's friend again or going on the podcast so all that stuff should be basically over really and truly but let's see let's see because essentially chris Lear's fans are a little bit weird anyway so they might excuse the whole entire thing but anyway um i'm done I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, <laughs> I'm done, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. Um, Severa Design, if you woke up at 3.30 in the morning to a strange sensation and when you look down, Chris Alia is looking at you sucking on your toes, would you tattoo his initials? <laughs> of course I wouldn't. That's a rhetorical question, but I guess you're saying that more so in terms of the other people who probably did that. To be fair, this is too complex and way outside of my mental capacity to understand. But I think when it comes to abusive relationships, um, clearly he was looking for broken people and he kind of attracted them and he basically took advantage of them in some way shape or form um, and he probably should know better not to do so but he exploited it for his own personal gain own weird sexual creepy gain I'm sure as well and it ended the way he ended in it and essentially you know played a huge part in destroying his career um, so yeah but I'm sure there are many things kind of, you know, attached to that sort of stuff, but it's all kind of sick and disgusting to be fair. So I'm just going to leave it alone there. Leave it alone.